What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video for pre-season of 2021-22. In this one, we're looking at six players to avoid for your game week one squads. I've even thrown a bonus three players in at the end as well. So technically it's actually nine, but I'm going with the main six, right? And just quickly before we get into it, three things that I want you to do. Give it a like if you enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button if you want great quality FPL content for the whole of pre-season and then throughout the season. And three, please listen to this right just because they're in this video to avoid for game week one i'm going to go through why that's the case it doesn't mean we have to avoid them for the whole season right and if there's actually a few reasons why you might be considering putting them in i'm going to talk about that as well i'm going to be devil's advocate for myself it might be position it might be price it might be alternatives it might be fixtures just listen to what i say about the players please give it a like hit subscribe let's jump into it so this happens every single season 4.5 million keeper the season before has an absolute worldie. Martinez was the top scorer, 186 points, right? That was brilliant. Okay, I'm not taking anything away from him. The problem is the next year they get priced at 5.5 million. Everybody sees that they scored so many points and then they all put them in their team, right? And I'm not saying that he's not a good keeper because he absolutely is. But I do think that the Aston Villa defense maybe overperformed a little bit last year. Like if you look at kind of underlying numbers, expected data and stuff like that, they were the eighth worst defense out of 20 teams. So they were in the bottom half and yet he's come away with 15 clean sheets now some of that was down to him his xg prevented was plus 3.7 right so he was a really good shot stopper we know that there's plenty there's one game in particular i remember i'm pretty sure it was brighton where brighton had so many shots and i think it ended up nil nil absolutely crazy right i think a bunch of us benched him as well last season so he was brilliant for 4.5 this year ideally we need to be finding the next 4.5 million keeper does that mean that those 4.5s will outscore martinez possibly not but what it does, it gives you an extra million to put into your team elsewhere. It's very rare that someone puts in a 5.5, 6 million keeper and then keeps up with everyone else. Maybe over a short time, uh, time period, they could. First three fixtures are looking good. Then it gets difficult. Chelsea away, Everton at home, um, and Man United away is not that easy. And if I have a look at the fixtures after that, it's Spurs away, then it's Wolves at home, then it's Arsenal away. So in the first nine fixtures, they play Chelsea, Everton, Man United, Spurs, Wolves, and Arsenal. And then it's even West Ham. So it's not that easy. Villa's fixtures aren't great. If you think going forward, once you've used your first wild card or when you're about to use it, then maybe Villa defence is looking great, then perfect. But there's a chance that he lose Greedish this summer as well. We're going to have to keep an eye on that one. If he goes, yes, he's not a defender, but in attack, he helps out a lot. He keeps the ball, he progresses the ball, um, and that obviously helps out the defence. They're having to do less work. So I think for 5.5 million, personally, he is just an avoid for me. I've not once... Have I put a draft together where I've put in an expensive keeper? I might spend five million this year because I think they have reduced a bunch of player prices in that bracket from 5.5 to 5. And there isn't too many playing 4.5 million keepers. But realistically, I'm always going to want that money on the outfield. Because cheap keepers can get can get saves like Martinez did last year. When they get saves, when they get clean sheets, they then got a chance of bonus points. And they start racking up big scores for a cheap price. So 5.5 million not for me so hear me out right i know you all love pookie i know he's a pretty good price at six million but like i said hear me out before you disagree and go and tell me in the comments why i've made a bad choice okay so first of all again the fixtures are awful we're not saying we have to avoid these players for the whole season right but the fixtures to open up are really bad now i know what you're all thinking remember when norwich were last in the league they played that opening game and i think it was against liverpool as well and pookie scored i believe they lost 4-1 off the top of my head but he did score he became a massive bandwagon i think he scored a hat trick or something like that in game week two or three and then he just went completely off the boil now last year he did really well his goals and assists were 0.79 per 90 minutes okay so close enough to one return um, every game okay but that was obviously in the championship so i'm looking here 0.79 the season before in the premier league it was 0.44 and then the season before that in the championship again it was 0.9 right we know the championship is a bit easy in the premier league right if you're a team that's just come up you were really good in the championship you're obviously starting at the bottom in the premier league so i'm not expecting norwich to get as many chances they've lost buendia as well we'll see who they bring in okay but losing buendia is a big miss for them and pookie's opening fixtures are horrible right now at six million 
It's maybe not too bad after that. From game week five, it's Watford, then it's Everton, then it's Burnley, then Brighton, then Chelsea, Leeds, Brentford, etc. They do have a fairly good run of fixtures between kind of game weeks five and 14. They're not too bad. And if I look at the list of six million options, you've got Welbeck at Brighton, Fabio Silva, IU, Vidra at Burnley's 5.5. There aren't too many options to choose from. So if you are spending just six million, he wouldn't be the worst option. But I think there's every reason to maybe go for Tony, for example, 6.5 million for Brentford. Their run is a little bit easier. Like if I bring up their fixtures quickly now while I'm recording this. So Arsenal at home, Palace away, Villa away, Brighton at home, Wolves away, then Liverpool. It doesn't get too much easier, but I think it's a little bit easier. And I think Brentford will do better than Norwich in the se- in the league this season, right? Realistically, I think you just want to spend a bit more on the forward line. You want to try and get that money to get up to 7.5, 8 million, where the real value lies. We can get a decent striker from a really good team that's got better fixtures as well. So for that reason, I'm saying Pookie is in a void from the get-go. I know some people are going to want him because of the cheapness, and fair enough. If you can fit in all the other players in your squad that you want to and you need a 6 million forward, then fine. Maybe go for Pookie. But those numbers, those goals and assists, are massively going to drop this year in the Premier League, especially when you start with Liverpool and Man City. I didn't know how early in the video to drop the controversial picks, but I thought, why not? Go for it at player three. Mason Mount is a potential player to avoid for game week one. Now, again, like a lot of these players, it's not just price and position, etc. Right? We're going to come on to some players that have changed position, which I don't think are any good now. But also fixtures are always going to play a key part. And Chelsea's opening run of fixtures is pretty difficult. Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs and Man City all in the first six. They could do well against Villa. They could do well against Crystal Palace. But ultimately, you want a better set of fixtures than that when you're paying 7.5 million, right? And there's quite a few options at 7.5 below or below, sorry, um, in the midfield bracket. But Mason Mount's already owned by 20% of all managers. Now, these ownerships are going to differ and go down and up over pre-season. Season, of course um, and bearing in mind I'm doing this one quite early this is a bit of an early look but 20% seems massively high now I think they've actually priced him quite well I think his stats were all right last year 0.19 xg per 90 0.24 expected assists it's just over 0.4 it's around the same as Saka at Arsenal who's a million less so keep that in mind Mount's very young so is Saka so I'd see some improvement there for sure and he is pretty much nailed on so he is going to tick over. He's one of those players that you can almost just put into your team and just leave there. 4.1 points per match for his price probably isn't that bad. But I just think early on in the season, when really all we've got to go on is what they did last year plus fixtures, I just don't think they're good enough for, for spending a 7.5 on Mount. Maybe if you early wildcard and you see the fixtures from game week 7 to 11 for Chelsea, which is Southampton, Brentford, Norwich, Newcastle, Burnley, ridiculously good fixtures. Maybe that's a good time to put him in. But if I'm looking here now um, at 7.5 or below, you've got Harrison. If he goes back to Leeds at 6 million, is decent. Obviously, Gundogan, I'm not sure how much of an option he will be this year, but we'll keep an eye on that. So check his 6 million. Not convinced by that, but Madison at 7 at Leicester. James Rodriguez, 7 million at Everton. They've both got better opening fixtures and they're a little bit of a cheaper price. I don't hate Mason Mount and I think I probably undervalued how good he was last season. And I think his stats are still looking pretty good. I would just want much better fixtures than that. I mean, 20% own with Liverpool, Man City, Spurs and Arsenal. I don't really get it. Let me know if I'm wrong. Let's just take a second to remember what an absolute legend Stuart Dallas was last year. He was brilliant. Okay, I think he started the season at 4.5 million. He got eight goals, three assists. He was listed as a defender. Leeds happened to get quite a few clean sheets in the end. And obviously, when you're chipping in with eight goals, you're that cheap. You're playing in midfield. Brilliant. Absolutely loved him last year. The problem is now, he's more expensive. He's 5.5 and he's listed as a midfielder. And again, everyone's going onto the website. They're seeing that he's very high up for a cheap price in terms of points. But you've got to take off all those clean sheet points that he got. Because obviously you only get one as a midfielder. Um, and I just think for 5.5 million, there's better ways to spend that money. Now, to be fair, if you were to go through the list of 5.5 million midfielders, like I'll just bring them up now, I would say there's probably not too many options, okay? So just looking at the top of the list, Westwood, 112 points, Hoiberg, 107, Neves, 104, uh, Almiron, 97. 
there's not too many options in that price bracket. That is why you need to find some more money to go up and replace him with like a 6.5 Rafinha, a 6 million if, if Harrison goes to Leeds. Both of them are better options at the same club. You know how you're going to find that million? You're going to go from Martinez to a 4.5 million keeper. That's how you do it. The fixtures aren't even that good as an attacker. Even if he spends the whole season in midfield... I still don't think he would warrant a place in our sides. He overperformed a little bit with the amount of goals he got. And obviously, for those of us that had him at the time, we didn't care less. But going into this season, I think there's much, much better ways to spend your money. Like, again, just, just re having another quick look through the list. There just aren't many options at 5.5. And the other thing is, if you go for someone like this from the start, then you realise that they're not that great of an attacker... And then you've got a switch. It's very hard to go up in price if you've got nothing left in the bank. And if you're going with Dallas plus money in the bank, that ain't a very good tr uh, strategy to start the season. So we'll remember the good times from 2020-21. But for this season, Stuart Dallas, I'm afraid 17.5% ownership is crazy. You're not coming anywhere near my team. Okay, we've got fan favorite Ward Prowse. There was a time last year where I think he got a couple of double digit hauls in a row and I still didn't rate him as an option. Got a bit of stick for it, which is fair enough. He's still 7.9% owned already. And I just think for the price, you can do a little bit better. Now, the one reason why people are looking at him, and this happens a lot when people build their FPL squads at the start of the season for game week one, is they're looking at total points. And I don't think that's always a great way to determine how valuable a player is, right? Now, to be fair, his points per match were similar to Mount. But this is the thing. You've got transfers in FPL. You don't have to just stick with a player and think, right, for 6.5 million, War Prowse is going to get me 150 points. I'll just keep him in my team. It's not how FPL works. We always transfer players around. Now, there will be some players in some positions that maybe you do just want to keep in. Perhaps your 4.5 million defender. Maybe it's a player like Trent Alexander. Alexander Arnold because you know he can get attacking returns, clean sheets, be explosive, highly owned, whatever it might be. But with Ward Prowls, you are really relying on the set pieces a little bit, I think. Like, if you think about who we just talked about, Stuart Dallas, he got eight goals last year. Well, so did Ward Prowse, right? And he played every single minute pretty much. I think he literally played every single minute. And he still only got eight goals. And three of those were penalties. And if Danny Ings is on the pitch and he's still at Southampton, I do believe he's ahead in the pecking order. So he wouldn't have even had those chances. I know how good he is at free kicks and I know how good he is at corners, etc. But to still only get eight goals, I mean, direct free kicks are hard. I think his record is something like one in 20, one in 25 games that he actually scores a free kick because they're difficult. You don't get a huge amount of chances every game as well. And if you look at the underlying numbers, right, 0.06 non-penalty expected goals per 90, 0.11 expected assists per 90. That is super low for an attacker. I'll tell you now, there's defenders with better stats than that. Luke Shaw being one, players like Cancelo, Trent, Robertson, they're all over higher or as close. So his creativity and his goal threat from open play it's almost non-existent. And we know how good he is from corners. He's going to set his teammates up. But of course, scoring from corners doesn't happen that often. So for 6.5 million, again, looking down the list, Saka's the same price. Buendia is the same price. Trossard is the same price. These are probably all more creative from open play, more goal threat players. And also, they probably have better fixtures as well. So for me, War Prowse is a complete avoid. Rafinha is the same price as well. War Prowse shouldn't be near anybody's team, in my opinion. He's nearly 8% owned already. And I think that will go up because of his total points from last year. Ignore that. Look at the fixtures. Look at the underlying stats. I just don't think he's a good option. Okay, so wan Saka feels like a little bit harsh to put him on. His points for match are 4.2. That was more than Mount and War Prowls from last year. And he's cheaper than both of them as well. But he's a defender. You can't um, compare like to like. Here's the reason why I don't think he should have 12% ownership. One, I'm not sure we should be doubling up on Man United defence. Although if you want to, then fair enough. wan is not a bad option. Um, but the, the main reason is Luke Shaw is also 5.5 million. And I can't really see much of a reason to go for wan instead. Now, I will play devil's advocate with myself. One thing is fitness, okay? So wan very rarely gets injured. He's pretty much nailed on. Unless you get one of those crazy scenarios like last year where Man United had to play like three games in five days... Wan-Bissaka is pretty much going to start every single game without the injury concerns. Although, Dallow could be back at Man United last year. Maybe that will change things up a little bit. Um, that's the only reason I can see for going for Wan-Bissaka. Shaw has a little bit more competition right now in Tellez. But again, Shaw's absolutely nailed on. 
okay? Unless there's loads of quick matches or he gets injured, Shaw is massively nailed on. He's one of the best players in that Man United team these days. And also, if you look at, like, bonus points, last year, Shaw got 22, and wan got 11. In more minutes, he got half the amount of bonus points. So when Shaw's on the pitch, he is just a better option. He's more creative. So wan XG plus XA per 90 expected assists is 0.1. For Luke Shaw, it was 0.2 last year. So for every 10 games, wan might get you one attack and return. Luke Shaw might get you two, right? So it might not look like that from last season, but the underlying numbers are definitely there for Luke Shaw. He's more creative. He's more likely to get you bonus points. And he is as nailed on when he's fit. So I think if you're going for one Man United defender, it's not wan It has to be Luke Shaw for the same price. Okay, so here are your three bonus players, right? The reason I put them in the end is because Firmino and Kante seem to always make this video. And Kante's ownership is quite low, but I want to talk more about defensive midfielders in general. And Schmeichel's just a goalkeeper. We've already talked about one. Who wants to keep talking about them, right? Firmino is so frustrating because those numbers are so good, right? Not the 3.9 points per match. That's really poor, in fact, for 9 million. But his expected data, expected goal involvement per 90 is 0.6. So uh, every 10 games, you can expect him to get six returns, either goals or assists, by those numbers. The problem is it doesn't happen. The last two seasons, he's underperformed his expected goals. And because he plays for Liverpool, there's so many other options, right? Mane, Salah, Jota, Trent, Robertson, maybe even going for a cheaper defender like Van Dijk or whoever it might be. There's just so many options. It's really hard to make the case to spend 9 million on him. And he just seems to be 9 or 9.5 million every single year. FPL are in a difficult situation where you can't really price him at 7.5 or 8 because he plays for Liverpool and he'd almost become must have. But at the same time, he's just not performing to the levels of a 9 million player that often. And I just think at the start of the season, Liverpool fixtures are so good. You have to go for the best options. And Firmino, for me, is probably not in the top five. With Kante, avoid defensive midfielders. Okay, simple as that. They don't get points for tackles, interceptions, blocks, or anything like that. In this game, it's all about assists and goals and clean sheets. And the uh, midfielders only get one for a, a clean sheet. So Havertz, etc., and Mount will all get the same one that Kante does. So just ignore him uh, completely, even though his price is good. Um, you're better off just getting a 4.5 million like Basuma or someone like that. And then Schmeichel, I was, I was surprised to see 8.5% ownership. The thing for me here is he plays for Leicester. So you can get Fafana for a cheaper price. You can get Justin for the same price. Soyuncu for the same price. I just think you're better off putting your goalkeeper money somewhere else. And if you want a Leicester defender or defensive player, just go for one of the defenders instead. There we go. That is my six plus a bonus three players to avoid uh, going into game week one of this season, right? Let me know which ones you completely disagree with. And obviously, if you have enjoyed it, please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. There'll be lots of FPL content in and around the Euro stuff while Euro 2020 is still on. Once that's finished, it'll be full-blown pretty much every single day FBL content right up until the start of the season and then pretty much every day for the rest of the season as well so make sure you've hit that subscribe button help me hit 200,000 subscribers by the start of the season and obviously hit that notification bell I'll leave it there another FPL video tomorrow hopefully you enjoyed that one hopefully you enjoyed tomorrow I'll see you soon